the t-shirt to dark mode i've set the t-shirt to dark mode which oh, means wow. it's time to go full throttle into the danger zone no more granny shifting we're gonna talk about a controversial topic fansly advertisements on twitch uh -oh. this is actually a war that i've been drafted into and tossed uh -oh. into the front line so i've been catching fire and getting called out labeled a hypocrite and morally flexible when it comes to things my friends do that i call others out for so I kind of want to talk about this entire subject here because I feel that it's just a load of dirty barnacles to call me hypocritical when it comes to fansly advertisements. So allow me to show you to your table and deliver your entree of drama that you've ordered. So, the situation in a nutshell. A couple weeks ago, there was the streamer awards that happened I on saw, Twitch. I saw that, I yeah, I was in that. I was able to attend them in person, so I received permission from QT Cinderella to watch party them. Yeah. This was a massive event that QT Cinderella put together. How and he says QT, man. Oh my god. I don't know why it just fucking... Uh. One of the advertisers right. for it, one of the sponsors, was Fansly. Yeah. So during the stream, a Fansly advertisement popped up, and this was my reaction to it. A free trial of some of our hottest creators. On top of that, sign in using your Twitch account and see which of your favorite streamers are already creating yeah, I saw that. content on Fansly. Fansly has a whole algorithm dedicated to discovering bridge. new content and creators through the Fansly For You feature. Wow. Swipe and discover today. A very tame giggle as if someone came up and playfully tickled me for a moment. Yeah. And people were upset because I didn't start spitting and shitting, taking up and shitting arms all over about it, yeah. how disgusting it was that fansly was being advertised on this broadcast here reason being is because prior i had made a video talking about a, a couple of things one of them was aiden ross when he showed porn to his audience my statement was that aiden ross went on pornhub in front of his audience which a lot of them are kids on the younger side of things so i said that was weird that was a weird thing to do so when I giggled during the Fansly segment, it was used as a smoking gun to call out and attack me for being a hypocrite. Because it's the same principle. Fansly was just shown on stream to an audience that undoubtedly... Yeah, I, it, I think they're about the same, personally. I, I think that, you know, advertising uh, a website that does porn isn't really that much different than advertising porn like it, it's pretty much the same thing like is it is it exactly the same thing no is what aiden ross did a little bit worse yes but they're both on the same spectrum which is showing porn to people that's what it comes down to now, Aiden didn't advertise porn, he showed it. Yeah, well, it's just like, I mean, showing porn, directing people to porn, whatever it is. Whatever you want to call it. Had kids watching. How is that The any advert doesn't show non-sexual content. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, like... Uh, uh, but like what if what but like what if you what what if you go to the website though? Like an advertisement for example like okay, like an advertisement for Cabela's, all right? If you go to the website, I'm pretty sure you can't find porn on that website. There's like no porn on the website. Uh you go to an advertisement for oh, I I don't know, like a makeup thing. There's probably no porn on that. Like, Fansly is a porn site. That's what it is. It's great. But that's what it is. Come on. Advertising cigarettes versus smoking is a big difference. I, I don't, yeah, but like, if somebody was advertising cigarettes to kids, uh, I don't think people would be a big fan of that either. But I do think that uh, overall, I mean... It, it, I don't think Aiden Ross is, like, special with, like, any of this because, like, yeah, kids watch Aiden Ross, but you have a viewership of, like, more than, like, a few hundred people. What are the odds that, like, somebody who's underage is going to be watching? I feel like it's, like, extremely high. The, the best that I think content creators can do is to just make it to where their platform, if they're going to show anything that could be NSFW um or, or like sexual it it's just make it to where you have to click a button to say that you're 18 like i i feel like if you have to do that that's the same thing that porn websites ask you to do 
that, that's that's basically enough for me like it's still kind of weird to try and show people porn on a stream like i i think it's weird just fundamentally but overall i think that that's that's really all you have to do be different than aiden ross going on pornhub charlie is a fucking hypocrite he called it out for aiden ross yeah uh, but doesn't do it when it's his friend qt cinderella yeah when i first heard this argument i thought it was just a bunch of fish paste i thought it was being used satirically because it didn't even compute that people would try to compare these two things going on an actual legitimate porn hub out of nowhere in front of your audience and just having porn real porn being played versus an advertisement which does lead to porn but the advertisement itself has more clothes on than a lot of things that are already freely broadcast on twitch that are easily accessible i didn't well i i, I wonder like because the thing is to me right it's that if if you had an advertisement for cigarettes for example like would people like that would people think that's okay like let's say you had an advertisement for like kids like to smoke cigarettes I think this would be this would be bad, especially if the advertisement was following like a, a Mario Kart commercial. And you have to keep in mind that like it's not like this was Google AdSense or whatever. This was planned programming. So I like yeah, like definitely what Aiden Ross again, what he did was definitely worse, but I, I feel like advertising fansly is is kind of the same thing and i don't even think it's a problem by the way i want to make sure one thing is very clear i have no problem with people getting fansly sponsors okay i think it's totally fucking fine it's great they pay you money you advertise the stuff that's it i think it's totally fucking fine but i do think that it is a it is a gateway to porn call it what it is and it's a direct gateway. It's not like a. It's not like a fucking anything else. It's a direct gateway. I didn't think these two things deserved to be on the same playing field, but that's where I was wrong. I clearly failed the captcha here and was labeled a bot because a lot of people do view these in the same category yeah. in the same wheelhouse. A YouTuber named Mew Kitty made a whole video on it talking about yeah, we uh, saw Twitch that. streamers and their hypocrisy. A video that I make a, an appearance in towards the end. And it's exactly what I just talked about, where I said it was weird when Aiden Ross pulled up Pornhub, but I laughed when Fansley was a sponsor of the Streamer Awards. Yeah. And not long after her video, Scott Schaefer made content covering the same topic, where, once again, the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 superstar Charles White comes into the frame once again with another banger cameo. And the argument is the same. Charlie called it out when Aiden Ross pulled up real porn, but didn't call it out when QT Cinderella advertised porn. And he did it because she's his friend, thus he is a hypocrite. And on stream I talked about this last night, and uh, I'll go ahead and get this out of the way right away. During that stream, and in the exact same video Mew Kitty has posted on one of her channels, I outright say both are bad. It's pretty clear from reading her comments, not like... Yeah, yeah, so he thinks the same way that I do. Like, yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, they're both bad. Like, there's a spectrum of them being bad, but they're both bad. I just don't think one of them matters. Her personal comments, but like the audience comments, that the majority of the people didn't even watch the full statement. Which isn't her fault, and I even don't blame the audience, because right now, the human race is being plagued by brain rot, parasite, short-form content, which has ruined the attention span of people. So I don't- well, I think also people like- people like feeling smarter than streamers. So the idea that streamers are hypocrites and you can see through them is very appealing. And if people get enough evidence to believe that, they're going to stop looking for more evidence that maybe they could be wrong. They're going to get they're going to stop right there and they're OK, that's good. I'm happy. Now let's move on. And I, I've I always think this kind of stuff is silly because personally, I, I, I feel like, yeah, sure, these things are different, but everybody acts different around their friends. I just uh, again. To me. I don't really whenever somebody says that they believe in something or anything like that, I don't like I don't believe them. I'm I'm like, yes, you will think this until it's beneficial not to. Like I usually just assume that people will go back on whatever they think if it's beneficial to do so. And I think usually I'm right. But 
uh, on the internet, this is like a very big point of contention, and a lot of people are like hyper fixated on this, and I find it to be very annoying. Uh, I do things that are hypocritical all the time. I'm not sorry. I, uh, and, and really, it, it's not that for me it's hypocritical. It's that my, you know, at the top of my pyramid of, of, uh, of goals is, is self benefit. And if something is beneficial for me, I'll do it, even if I said that you shouldn't do it, because it's better for me to do it than not do it. It's just that simple, really. <laughs> yeah, that that's really all there is to it. I necessarily find it shocking that they didn't watch all uh -huh. 10 minutes of what I was saying. But in that clip, I outright say both can be bad but they are not the same to me. Thus, I disagree that it's hypocritical that I made statements about Aiden Ross and the porn thing being really weird, and I didn't make the exact same statements for QT Cinderella's Fansly sponsor. I think you can, if you, if you wanna, if you wanna get into the legal speak here, yeah, definitely it, it's not the exact same. Of course it isn't. I'll go ahead and prove that it's there right now, real quick, before getting into why I think they're so different. But ultimately, both are not a great thing to be advertising to an audience that is undoubtedly going mm -hmm. to have children watching. Of course, advertising fansly only fans or anything in front of an audience that has younger children on it, it's always going to be not a great decision. It's one of those things, yeah. Now let's make like an egg and hard boil this subject. Real quick. <laughs> so... And, and this is, I think, the problem with videos like this, like the Moo Kitty video and, and other ones that are similar to this, is that they intentionally ignore context in order to create a false narrative. It's the same thing that everybody accuses like CNN or Fox News of doing. Well, like these individual creators do the exact same thing where they say something and then they're like, yeah, this is exactly like what it is. And, you know, like here's the story and it just makes somebody look bad. And it's like, it is intentionally disingenuous or it it's it's disingenuous to the point to where you should have done better research and it makes people look bad yeah i i think it's it's ridiculous i hate that stuff quick so the difference between aiden ross pulling up pornhub mm -hmm. and cutie cinderella bringing up a fansly sponsor is very clear right off rip if if all of you in the classroom yeah, right now have your thinking caps title. on you'll yeah, know exactly. a huge difference I was able to play the entire Fansly ad as it aired because they are all clothed. You are not getting immediate nudity or pornographic content. It is an advertisement for pornographic content going to the website, yes. But unlike Aiden Ross's moment with real Pornhub just being there, actual fucking full-blown porn, you got pussy tits. I, I, I kind of don't want to Google FCC guidelines for showing kids porn. Like, I don't really want that to be on my search history. But I wonder exactly what the rules would be, because in my mind, I don't think it, it it's that big of a difference. Like, I, I, I don't know. I really am not sure, but I, I couldn't imagine if you went to, let's say, Toys R Us and you put up Fansly ads, could they sue you? I don't know. I, I couldn't see why not. I feel like that's advertising porn to kids. How's it not? It's, uh, Toys R Us is gone now. I guess, you know, wherever else kids go nowadays. I, I don't know. So, it, it and, and like, I don't really know what the, the actual rules are. Did, did Aiden have 18 plus on his stream? He did. People who watched Aiden Ross's stream had to confirm that they were 18 and that same thing like that that's the same gate that most porn websites have and to be honest a lot of porn websites don't have that there's plenty of porn websites that don't have that gate the stream rewards 18 plus no they didn't it's everything all right there immediately that is not what you got with the QT Cinderella mm -hmm. Fansly sponsorship. Thus, immediately, those two are already different. Showing the porn to an unsuspecting audience out of fucking nowhere is a lot worse than advertising a service that has porn on it. And that's... I, I think that unsuspecting would probably be the case with Fansly as well. Uh, I don't think that you could go into... Like, could, could you go into the streamer awards and assume that there would be ads for Fansly? 
I don't I don't necessarily think that I feel like if I was going to bet which stream would have porn on it more, I would say Aiden Ross's stream, especially on kick. I'm pretty sure you can like you can bet that's going to have something bad. Like just there's it's something bad right there. It was literally right after a Mario Kart ad. Yeah. No, and again, like, I don't have a problem, like, I, I, I don't have a problem with them doing this at all, but, like, let's just, it, this is what it is, right? I mean, I don't know. It's what it is. Having, uh, porn ads suddenly pop up isn't exactly expected either. Yeah. Nice Twitch, nice tits on Twitch as a gateway. Yeah, but, like, the difference with that is that like female streamers are explicitly forbidden to promote any sort of uh, uh of like adult content so like if some girl gets done with her hot tub stream and she says okay I <laughs> make sure to follow my only fans if you like what you see she's gonna get banned like she'll get banned for that and and I understand that there is, again, another distinction. Oh, follow, my, you know, look at my link tree. And the link tree has the OnlyFans in it. So it's like, how is that okay? I I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I feel like, like, what are we doing here? Like, why are we, why are we playing this game? But it's like, can a, a streamer, like, so it, it's like, it, it opens up other questions, right? Where it's like, can a streamer advertise their Twitter? But if their Twitter has the OnlyFans on it, can they not advertise their Twitter? So, like, it doesn't have to do with LinkedIn. Do you, you, you see how, like, it's very hard to know exactly where to draw the line? I, I think that, I think it's very fair to draw the line at intentionally promoting porn directly on stream. Directly. Like on the screen, it's on the screen. You can see it on the screen. I think that's like, let's start there and then we'll move backwards. I think that's fair. Something Scott Schaefer does touch on in his video. His is more of a deeper look at the subject and Mew Kitties is more memeing with it. Yeah. I always thought her content was supposed to be silly and over the top trolling, but she does seem genuinely upset at me, and I imagine it's... I think that a lot of people, uh, and this is the way that a lot of people that do commentary are, is like, they probably hold these opinions, but they make them a joke to an extent. I think that's the way I've, I've kind of, like, grown to experience it. I, I think that she probably believes it or doesn't like it, but I think also if it was an unpopular opinion, you probably wouldn't see that many videos about it either. Like, a lot of commentary channels try to latch on to popular narratives and then kind of, like, farm them. Like, obviously, like, Charlie does this, I do this, like, everybody does this. But I think the problem is, like, whenever farming something it becomes disingenuous. Because of my statements, and I also did say I'm not the biggest fan of the way she edits her content. I called it Zoomer editing. Which sounds... I mean, like, I just think that she needs to fucking do the audio equalization. It's just, it, it's bad. Like, that's it. Like, it, the mu the background music's as loud as she is. It's louder. You can't even hear what she's saying. Mean-spirited when I really didn't mean it to be. Yeah. She edits her videos, like, very chaotic on purpose, where it's a lot of sound effects, you know, like a fucking gong being hit pretty often yeah. or, like, really loud blasting music pretty often. And that's just never been my cup of tea. But I never meant it as an insult on her honor. It's just not something that I'm personally a huge fan of. The same way that she doesn't like my content. I didn't mean it to be mean. And I apologize that it may have come across that way. I certainly didn't mean it to. But the whole point of me mentioning this right now is I do want to say that Scott Schaefer did also talk about the difference between playing porn versus advertising the fansly. He did touch on that. Last night I made the comparison that the Fansly ad actually had more clothing on the people in it than what you would already find on Twitch right now in the hot tubs category. 
where it is bikinis and very, very revealing clothing. And that is a category that Twitch itself advertises. If you go to Twitch when you're not logged in, a lot of the recommended channels are hot tub streams. So Twitch itself does peddle content that is clearly sexually charged. Oh, they but absolutely do. And most of the girls that do the hot tub streams have OnlyFans or Fansly or sometimes both. That's just, that's what it is. And they, they do the hot tub streams or the ASMR streams. And they use the stream on Twitch as a gateway to getting people to subscribe to OnlyFans or to uh, to Fansly. Like, that's how it works. And again, like, that's those are the rules. Like, I mean, if Twitch doesn't like that, then that's up to them. Like, I'm just saying this is what the rules are. And that's how it works. My point with this statement was to draw the immediate comparison that this fansly advertisement wasn't immediately exposing young viewers to sexually explicit material and it's even more easily accessible for them on twitch already by just going to the category right next to the fucking just chatting one that was the whole point of that that's something xqc didn't quite understand calling me wrong saying that there's not a bleached butthole right away or something on hot tubs category thus checkmate <laughs> hits me with the scholars mate well that i i think that we can all agree that like hot tub streams are not porn to the level that nudity and like actual porn is on OnlyFans. Like they're, they're obviously completely different. Like one is a girl in a bikini doing things that could be sexually suggestive. The other one is girls intentionally trying to be sexually suggestive and sometimes having sex like i mean that that's fuck i that that's completely fucking different i i think it is now obviously like and definitely it's true that it's not it's not immediate and that's why i said that the aiden ross thing was worse is that aiden ross did it in an immediate sense and the fansly ad does it in a like a an abstract sense like you have to click on the link and then follow the link and then go to the website so like it's it's a bit harder but it's still a direct call to action to subscribe to porn on a stream it's a direct call to action it's not like it's a oh well you know like follow my twitter and then there's like uh porn on her twitter or something like that it's direct That wasn't my point. My point was the ad itself didn't contain any explicit imagery or anything high. Sorry, I pause again. Um, Aiden shows legitimate uncensored porn without consent. That's the difference. Well, the people did consent to it, though. They consented to it by clicking that they're over 18 and that they may be subjected to things that are adult in nature. So the consent argument doesn't work. And then also it doesn't work whenever you look at account users, people that are users of Twitch, because that users of Twitch also consent in different ways as well. And I think that users of Twitch do not consent explicitly to seeing sexual content, and especially not if they consent to being over 18. So I don't think the consent argument holds up at all, honestly. I really don't think so. I, I don't think it's even remotely close. sexual at least nothing that was worse than what is already currently being advertised on twitch in that category and when you go to fansly there is still well, to be fair as i said the what is being advertised which are these girls that are in hot tubs and bikinis they cannot do a direct call to action go buy my porn they cannot do that if they do, they get banned. Now, this is a difference. It is a small difference. But it is a difference in the same way that the Fansly ad is a small difference from the Aiden Ross thing. I, 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 I find them all on the same spectrum. I, 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 I do. I find them all on the same spectrum.
not immediately ass and titties in your face right away. Thus, I mm -hmm. didn't think by scanning the QR code, people would immediately just be fucking blasted with porn all over the place like Charles Xavier jacking into Cerebro. So I viewed the advertisement very differently than a lot of people because even when you scan the QR code you still don't immediately get porn. There's already a lot of degrees of separation and a lot of obstacles to go through as opposed to Aiden Ross which just pulled up porn as a jump scare during fucking stream. Yeah. It, it to me still is very different. I also was under the assumption. I would also say that that's the exact thing that you could say for steak too. Like, you don't immediately start gambling on stake. You have to make an account, and there's a bunch of barriers to entry with that as well. But people are still not okay with stake. That Fansly was only accessible to 18 plus after you verified your age. I don't use the platform. I thought you had to verify you were 18 plus in order to even get to the pornographic content. Thus, I thought it was even harder never for children Fansley to either. have got porn out of that advertisement if they weren't of age. Not only would they have had to leave the platform to get it, they would then have to verify their age and make an account for it. I thought there was a lot of steps to it, making it very difficult for them. But according to some research now, it actually seems like Fansly is extremely easily accessible for anyone of any age. There's not a whole lot of security to it based on the things I've read, which is knowledge I didn't have last night. So, I made the comparison that the Fansly advertisement remind me of all of the strip club billboards that are spaced around all of the major interstates. Yeah. Anytime I go up north to Pennsylvania, there is hundreds of strip clubs being advertised. We and have on those, those advertisements, there are women in bikinis and very, very uh, revealing lingerie. Yes. And they tell you exactly where to go for the strip club. Well, when you're driving through, there's a good chance a lot of those cars are going to have kids in it and see those advertisements. So I compared Fansly to a strip club billboard because, in principle, if Fansly worked the way I thought it did, where you had to be 18 years or older to enter, it's kind of like a strip club advertisement because a kid could see that but still couldn't access the content because the strip club would obviously turn them away. Turn them away. Yeah. Ideally, assuming you're not going to some kind of fucking shady, corrupt strip club. And I thought Fansly was the same way. But apparently that's not the case, so that... Well, there's that... always going to be ways to get through. Uh, I mean, like, it's the same as... Like, if you see some girl has an OnlyFans, like, you just Google it, and you're going to have some images and leaks. Like, that's just how it is. Like, girls go through a lot of links to get these things removed, but they get posted back up, too. So, like, if you start having a conversation about it, uh, I, I think that it, it's very much a gateway uh, for that exact thing. A comparison doesn't work anymore, and I recognize that now. And I also made the comparison to the old GoDaddy commercials, which were highly sexualized oh, yeah. content that was broadcast during, like, Super Bowl, during sporting events, where it was things like a girl with huge honkers. Those were great. Uh, you know, her straps, like, breaking off, and, like, uh, she's in a courtroom and, like, judges going, hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> Yeah. And then, like, she's trying to say something, and the other strap's, like, wiggling. And then it's, like, right when it breaks off and about to reveal the the giant uh, milkers, it says, go to GoDaddy.com to finish it. Yeah. And I wasn't really making a big point out of that. I just wanted to point out that, man, it really does feel like the early 2000s again with a lot of the internet arguments we get into these days. It's shit we've had for years. History really does kind of repeat itself. Because I do still think that's a pretty fair comparison. That's fundamentally, like, the same thing. The argument back then was... Think of the children. They were watching this sport, and then all of a sudden, uh, sexual content advertisement. So that, that's all I was really saying with that one. But yeah, in closing, I feel like there is no real good faith argument to be made that I'm hypocritical because I called Aiden Ross pulling up Pornhub weird and didn't immediately start calling out how weird it was for Fansly to be a sponsor of the Streamer Awards. Well, because, yeah, he said that that was weird, too. So, like, there's it's not hypocritical. But it not being hypocritical doesn't make losers on the internet feel smart, so nobody's going to be talking about that. That's just how these things go. Like, yeah, it, it's, yeah, he said that weeks later. Well, so what? I mean, like, why does it even matter in the first place? Like, I, I don't really understand. I've, I've always felt this to be weird, is that, like, people, like, hyper fixate on content creators and like them making statements on things like i don't really give a shit what people say or, or not i mean i i it's it's very weird and and i think also like i talk about this stuff a lot because i find it interesting but 
there's a lot of things like I just don't really talk about a lot because I don't really give a shit about them. And like, that's it. Yeah, people have been hyper fixated on what other people say and do. Yeah, I, I think that more more or less the best way to address this stuff and the best way to handle it, this is what I always do, is I always do what's um, what, what what's beneficial for me. And I think that if you just go off of that, nobody can accuse you of being hypocritical. <laughs> because the only time that they would accuse you of being hypocritical is if you do a charity stream. You know, like, that's it. It's like, ah, oh, what are you doing now? Like, what the fuck is this? Like, bro, like, who's this hypocrite? What the fuck? I feel like the two aren't really comparable. Blasting porn, real yeah. porn, immediately to your audience, out of nowhere, no warning, and right in their face, mm -hmm. just on stream, is completely different than an advertisement to a platform which does have porn, but a lot of things that they'd have to do in order to access it. Granted, I've now learned that it's easier than I thought it was. I still think the two are drastically different. So I still just don't think it's hypocritical. As I've said, neither one of them is great. I don't think either one of them is an amazing thing to do. But they are just not the same. And it's really fucking silly to pretend that they are. They are very different. And uh, yeah, uh, that's about it, really. Just wanted to talk about it. See ya. I don't think they're very different, but I do think they are different. I think they're on the same spectrum, uh, absolutely. I think they're very close. Uh, how how big of a difference? It's like because a lot of the arguments that were being made for why Fansley is different could be made for steak. They could be made for gambling on steak. But that was bad. Under the same logic, so why are we not applying the same logic to Fansley? I don't understand that. Uh, to me, I don't. I think people should get Fansley ads if Fansley pays them well, because they they. I mean, they've obviously. I mean, pe dude, people love porn. Like they're making a lot of money. Just do that.